Hello and welcome to my video on making purple dye with the lichen Punctilia reducta. I'm Julian Lieber. Before we can dye, we need to find and identify the lichen. In the eastern United States, you can often find this lichen in deciduous forests. The thallus, or body of the lichen, appears pale blue and dry, but greener in the center when moist. Sometimes, the center of the lichen appears like tiny broccoli, which are asexual spores contained in finger-like isidia. We can also see the small white spots called pseudocephalae on the lobes near the edge of the thallus. In the areas where the thallus is broken, we can see the internal white cortex and white underside. A further identification test is to drop concentrated bleach on the broken thallus, which should turn orange or red. While this reaction occurs, we should discuss ethical and sustainable lichen collecting. You should only collect lichen where it will soon be decayed or destroyed, and only in limited amounts to keep the population healthy. I will take lichen which is on fallen, detached bark, or on wood piles for disposal or burning. Early spring is often a good time to look for fallen bark. Don't remove lichen from trees. We can then take the bark pieces and scrape the lichen off with a knife. Some attached bark is okay, but it takes up space in the jar. Add the lichen to a glass or plastic container with a tight lid. We will fill it up halfway with water, tap is fine, and then the rest of the way with household aqueous ammonia. Leave some air space at the top. The lecanoric acid in the lichen reacts with ammonia and oxygen to form the purple ochrian pigment after about 1-6 to six months of daily shaking and opening the jar every 1-2 to two weeks to allow for oxygen to enter. When ready, the liquid should be dark purple. Pour out the liquid and either filter it or use a device like a syringe to transfer without the sediment at the bottom or floating lichen pieces at the top. Using more dye produces a stronger color. I use a dedicated glass jar for dyeing. You should not allow the dye to contact containers or utensils used for preparing food. I'll check the pH here. High pH will produce more purple colors, while low pH will make red or pink colors. It's difficult to tell, but I think we're around 10 or 11 pH units. Weigh out your wool yarn and loosely tie it before placing in the dye. Wool or other protein fibers work best for dyeing with ochrian. Place your yarn in the dye and fill it to submerge. Use water to produce purple or vinegar for red or pink. Mix the wool to help it dye evenly. We'll check the pH again. Hmm. 
which is still high around nine, and this should give us a purple color. I use a boiling water bath to heat the yarn and dye. You should do this outside because the dye solution puts off strong ammonia fumes. Covering the jar reduces the fumes produced. Bring the water to a boil. and mix the yarn. I will then hold temperature using the slow cooker function on my instant pot. Heat for 20 minutes, then stir. Repeat this two more times for a total of one hour. We can see that the yarn is now very well colored. Lift up the yarn to drain. Press out as much dye liquid as possible. You can reuse the dye bath again for a lighter colored yarn. Add the yarn to a cool water bath and agitate and wring out the yarn to remove excess dye. The pot I'm using is dedicated for use with dyes. You can do this under the tap after most of the ammonia is washed out. It's also important to note that the color can be modified after dyeing by contact with acidic or basic solutions so your colors may shift depending upon how the yarn is used. For example, acidic rainwater may turn hats or mittens more red or pink. Bring out the yarn to remove as much water as possible and use the tied loops to detangle. Hang the yarn up to dry. The final product is cushy, beautiful purple yarn ready to be used for crocheting, knitting, felting, or any creative product you can think of. Thank you for watching and good luck with your dyeing.